employee skill development. So um, we talk, now we kind of know, we kind of know what we need to do, kind of. We got to, we need to build these competency standards. And again, don't, that's just one example. If you're interested in these for trades, electricians, mechanics, I can provide those to you. I have a card up here. Uh, I'm all, I work for the government. It's all open source. Let's go ahead and skip that process. If you ask me to provide something, I'm gonna just give it to you because I'm required to by law anyway. So it's not a big deal. So just make it easy on everybody. You don't have to worry about Gwinnett County trying to take your business over here and likewise, so we can all work together. So now the question is how do you, so now that you have this plan and you know what you want to do, how do you get your organization to do this? So, and this is the hard part. So this is kind of what I've been working on the last um, two years. You may have um, uh, management union structures and things like that to, to, to navigate as well. I had to navigate um, HR, which is kind of, so we had to, had to go through those um, processes. And it's taken a while to get this, to get to where I'm at now. And we've just kind of really started to roll it out right now. So this is a, this is not, this is a campaign level effort. This is not, I like to say it's a ground up approach that needs a top down support. The whole organization has to be saying, we, we're, we're going to do this. That's from the very top of the leadership. Um, we actually, um, so how do, you know, how do you know you're ready to do this, right? How do you know your, your employees are going to accept it, right? What we actually did back in, uh, we had a, uh, Brown and Caldwell help, help us out early on. They helped us out with the communication. They actually did a survey for us and they gave it to the employees. And anytime you give your employees a survey, right, and you're kind of like, you know, sometimes it's very nerve wracking. You don't want to, what are the results going to say? Are they going to, they're not ready, they are ready. Well, we actually had really good results. And the bottom line was the employees were ready for this. They, they, wanted, they wanted the leadership, they wanted the skill development, they were ready for this, right? But they're not the only piece of the puzzle. So the employees are important. Is your management ready for something like this? Is your HR system ready for something like this? So it's gonna take a lot of that to get this off the ground. So we call this employee skill development. So when I came into Gwinnett County, I kind of brought the Qualcart approach and this employee skill development was already going on um, that had already been started. It was right at the beginning stages of it and these two efforts kind of merged together and they became one. So uh, what the employee skill development program is a competency based promotion system. So at least up until the technical levels what we're talking about here is less interviewing. It means you can get to at least to a subject matter expert level through gaining skills and competencies, demonstrated skills and competencies. So you can get to a certain level. Now, once you get into supervisor and, and kind of low management positions, you're still gonna have interviews, right? You, you get into different skill sets. It's got to do with leadership, management, and people. So we're not, we haven't got rid of interviews, but you can get now where it wasn't like this before at Gwinnett County, you could only maybe get to one to two level, kind of just get through the apprenticeship ranks. And then it was all interviews. Now, in some cases we've changed it so you can get up to a three or in sometimes up to a four level based on gaining these competencies. So if you're gonna do this, it's very, very important that you have clear distinctions between these competencies. And that's really what these qual cards, that was a, that ended up being, these qual cards were a major, major piece of that. We could clearly define who's competent what is what based off, it was not only knowledge and certifications and what you're getting in classes, but it's skill-based sign-offs that your supervisors and managers are signing you off. And that ended up being a, a very big component to, to this process. So, so now, kind of, we kind of decided what we want to do. This is how, this is a system that we're going to use to get us to the new, the new way of, of doing business. Competency-based promotion. That's the carrot. 
Now, think about it if you're, you're new you're, and you're coming into the organization and you saw a clear path how you could get up into the organization, at least to certain levels, right? You're not, it's not necessarily going to get you to a manager level without doing an interview. But you, you had a clear path or promotion path. You could go up one, two, three, maybe four levels, right? If you're new, that's, that's pretty cool, right? That's kind of a succession plan to get you up to where you want to go. Can, can anybody see any, anywhere we might see some resistance in this? Old time what, operators? Yeah, what if you're already a four? What, what I found out with, with this program is it's, it's all about what's in it for me, right? So everybody had a different take on it. And that, that's, we're all people, right? So we all kind of understand this. But this program is great if you're coming and you're starting from the ground. But what if you're already a four, right? And you're like, man, I got to do all this extra stuff. And I got to do, I've been doing this for 20, 25 years. What do you mean you're telling me I got to do all this extra stuff, right? So, you know, there, there's going to be some of that going on, right? But. Um, you know, what this is going to do is it's going to raise the performance of, of the entire group over time. And I'll, I'll talk about um, how this has kind of played out over the last couple of years. So this, this was started in 2015 for Gwinnett County. 2015. So the first year was basically building a lot of the qual cards, building the competencies and stuff like that. And we were, we were doing a lot of focus groups. We were, um, one of the keys to this working was um, including the, the managers and the, and the experts in the field. And they helped develop this. This is not my plan. This is not, I didn't do all this work. We had groups and we worked on these things and we developed it. Um, the next kind of year was going, getting this through HR. And that pretty much took a full year. It's not. What we envisioned at the beginning is not what, what happened at the end of the year. So some, some of the things we thought we wanted didn't make it through that process. So you kind of had to lose, we had to lose some battles to win, win the war. Yes? What did you ask HR for buy-in on? Or uh, one, one great example is we wanted some of the plant managers to have some college mm -hmm. credits, right? So once you start talking about that and you start in a merit-based system and you're talking about that and then you're talking about reclassification and then you get into salary studies. If you've ever been in that conversation with HR, it, it, gets, a little, it gets a little uncomfortable, right? So, um, so some of the things where we, you know, they wanted, they wanted this program to be a springboard into getting a degree and we weren't quite able to get there. Um, so some of that stuff we had to kind of back off on a little bit. That's just one example, but there's a lot of other examples as well. So, all right. So the purpose of our employee skill development or ESD program is hire, train, and retain the best quality people to operate our state-of-the-art plants. So we had a lot of change. We built these state-of-the-art plants. We need good people, highly trained and qualified people to operate them, right? Build the bench. So we want, when, you, when it comes to promotion time, we, you want the, those people to be there ready to move up and assume those positions. Of when, you, when you lose a supervisor and they retire, you want that person right underneath to be there, right? So if you do that and you build a system that builds that bench and they have the competencies to be there, that person should be there, right? Assuming, you know, there's also other people skills involved um, with that as well. So. Address the skills gaps. We talked about that on the first hour. Um, um, we got skills gaps because of the technology. That's where the qual cards come in. And then mitigate our loss um, knowledge and skill due to retirement and to attrition. All right, so we had, we, we had to build some things to, to order this to happen. So our goal was we're going we're gonna to increase the training and qualifications. We're going to make a competency-based system, and we're going to reward you. But we realize we're not quite there, right? So we're going to have to put in kind of these programmatic things to make a plan for everybody to succeed. So we've created um, these, these things are, 
I call them systematic things, they're part of the ESD program, but we're gonna have an overall plan, which is our progression path. We're gonna have these qualification cards. I'll talk a little bit about our safety training a little bit. And then we need, we need to basically, every individual has to have a plan to succeed. So we're gonna do a skills assessment. We kinda of do a gap analysis on everybody. We say, where are you? Okay, we're gonna, we have these new qualifications for you. Where are you today? All right, what are you missing? What do we need for you to get to this new place? And then we're gonna develop, have an individual development plan, person by person, so nobody gets left behind. Everybody has a plan for success. So this is a lot of people, so um, we'll talk about this in a, in a second, but roughly for our first, what, I'm, what I'll call phase one of this, because we actually have to come back, circle back around later to get everybody else, it's about 370 people. So it's quite a bit of people. So, so we have these tools, the skills assessment and these individual development plans, they're paper records. They're actually gonna go away once they get to the new promised land. They're just gonna kinda, they're gonna go on this new electronic system, which I'm gonna show for you. And this is all done through a learning management system. So we had to build a system. You cannot do a competency-based promotion system if nobody can agree on who's qualified what. You have to have good documentation it all has to be recorded. Everybody has to have the same picture. The employee, the manager, and HR all have to agree on who's qualified what. And you need a system to capture all that. If you're not doing that, if you're not tracking training, if you don't have a way to, to, to agree with that, all you're gonna have is arguments and disagreements on who's qualified what, right? So that, that was very, very essential now, once you build the call cards, you need a system that can track it all. And, and, and that was pretty uh, essential. We had to build this basically from the ground up, so. All right, so here's our, our ESD program. So we, we started with the, our warehouse techs. They were kind of our pilot group. There were only 13 people, so it was, it was really good. It was a small group. We can kind of handle it. And we're doing what I call this waterfall um, kind of roll out. So we're taking each group and we're going, so we got this pilot group and then we're su um, successfully doing the other groups. So we're learning things as we go and that way we can apply that to, to the next group. So our warehouse techs, they are fully on um, in the implementation of this new system. We rolled that out um, a few months ago and they're kind of our pilot group and they're, they're doing um, exceptionally well. Um, they're doing the qualification cards, they're getting certifications, they're doing all the things that we need. Um, they were, um, one of the big keys to their success was the, was the management of this group. So I'm gonna show you that not only is this requiring the individuals to do more, it's requiring management to do more. And that's very important as well. Management is gonna have to do more because now you have to track and, and help your individuals get, get these qualifications. So if you're just leaving it to them to figure it out on their own, that doesn't work with the system. Okay, our, our trades associates, this is over 100 people. They're the ones we're starting our, our training right now with these folks. So these, um, this is our next group. This is about 100, a little over 100 people. So this is an, another big group that we're doing and then it's just gonna go down. Our, we don't actually get to our operators. Th these will all happen next year in 2019. All right, so the first thing is you need to, we need to develop a progression path. So we had, um, back in 2015 and going into 2016, we actually hired Brown and Caldwell to come on board and they kind of helped us with this. But I, what, what I will tell you is no consultant is gonna be able to get this through the, over the, uh, the goal line for you. You're gonna need some type of internal champion of this. You're gonna need um, top level support that's gonna have to, have to um, you know, make decisions, have to tell the, the managers and everything, get everybody on board, have to deal with HR issues as they come up. And so this is really a commitment from the whole organization. Um, they, they helped us kind of set this up, but it was really, um, they were kind of out of the picture 
pretty early. And I've been kind of the program manager for this and kind of getting all the groups. I kind of describe myself as Dr. Phil. I get these groups in, in together and they, they go back and forth. And I'm just kind of a moderator and I'm trying to get them to agree on what it means to be qualified in, in, in these different roles. So, so these are your different levels. This goes through one through six here. These are, these are our wastewater operators, but they're all different. We have them for trades, we have them for engineers, we have them from, for all of these. So you have your defined competencies in here, and we're gonna look at this. This is just a high level. We're gonna look at this in more detail in a second here. You'll be able to read it. But you have your career levels in your columns, and you have your competencies in your rows here. And you, you can kind of see here how these kind of are stacking up. As you go <clears throat> higher and higher, you're kind of stacking, stacking these things up. It's not just the qual cards. The qual cards are just a couple lines in here. There's other competencies as well. There's licenses. There's, when you get into the higher levels, you start getting into management and leadership competencies as well. All right, so our only uh, rule in here is you, the only, you have to go from a one to a two. You can't stay uh, kind of apprentice level. You gotta kind of get to a, like a journeyman level here. So you can't stay at the, at the, at the new person. You have, have to go from one to a two. This term right here, PROMA, is automatic promotion based on your, you gaining those competencies. Now it's not fully automatic. You also have to be a good employee. You have to have good performance. You have to show up to work. You have to not give your boss grief. You have to be recommended for it as well. So it's not, it's, all those things, your performance appraisal still matters as well. But in this system, you can go all the way up to a four based off getting what I'll show you here in a second of all these things, all these rows accomplished. And then when you get up to the supervisor and manager level, they're still, they're gonna be interviews. Right? We, at some point, you get into the people skills, right? And it's not just about, this is all, it's really about subject matter expertise, all the way up to about a four. And then here, now you start getting into hiring, firing, disciplining, things like that. Communication, leadership, management, those start to becoming important. So th this little dot here indicates when they're required. Here is our licensing. Uh, I'm not sure how California does it, but we do ours kind of backwards from everybody. Three is actually the lowest that we start. We go three, two, one is our, in our licensing qualifications. It's just Georgia, just ignore that. It's, it's just the way we are, so. So this is the, the licensing for the operator. So this is all state requirements. This is non-negotiable. This is, we have to do this for the state. So you have to get your licenses at the required levels. So that's part of it. That used to be all that was necessary for our operators. You're an operator, you got your license, you figure it out. All the stuff here is now new to some degree. It wasn't, or wasn't necessarily required. We have an onboarding process we do. You have to do tours of our facilities. We have, we, I call it a safety matrix, but I'll, I'll show you that. You have all your qual cards, so whatever plant you're at, if you add a certain plant, you have to do the qual cards for those plants or you're not gonna go up. So even maybe you, if you shift and you're already up at these one level, at a higher level, you may be given a grace period. So if you, sh if you switch plants, you still have to do the qual cards for the new plant. Doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna demote you, but you're gonna be given an amount of time to get there. And then we get into, these are all Gwinnett County specific trainings, we have different HR type trainings. Then we have these kind of elective management and leadership courses. So as you start getting into supervisor and manager, you start getting some of these more soft skill, people skills, performance appraisals, FMLA issues, uh, you know, workers comp, you start getting into those type of trainings as well. All right, these are our, our plant tours. So we have, we, every month we go and um, we, you know, we started doing this to where we take everybody in the organization, we spend a full day and we go, you basically go see one of everything. You go to a water plant, a wastewater plant, the lab, a stormwater site, and a pump station. We take everybody, because we figured, we found out that after people have been there 15 years, they never seen a water plant. Even if they're in customer service, they're talking to a customer, they don't understand all that goes on 
to make clean, safe drinking water, right? So we, we've, we've thought this to be very, very important to us. So we've kind of been doing this for about a year and a half now with, with really um, great results. So everybody has to do this. This is our safety matrix. This is a little bit of an eyesore here. I won't get, go into all the details, but this is our recurring safety training. So this is kind of the awareness level. Um, so everybody, we basically put everybody in one of the three OSHA categories. You're, you're either, well, two OSHA categories. You're either in the office where you, you have to do kind of a bare minimum training, general industry is the plant, or construction. And these, there's basically every two years you're, you're going and you're doing these courses. The one thing that's really different from us now is that we're providing these, this is our online library. So you don't necessarily have to get into a class. These are off the um, Safety First, AWWA series, Safety First. And you go it and you can take it. You watch a video, you go through some slides and you, you take a test. And you do, these occur every two years. So this is kind of our safety refresher training. This is part of that program. You always have to keep up to this. Now what if you're not doing it? It doesn't mean you get, don't get fired, but now it means you have a performance problem, right? And it, you're going to have to speak with your boss about it. So, but, so we've implemented um, this kind of safety matrix everybody has to do. Here's your qual cards. I talked about these earlier. This is, these are those skill-based sign-offs you're doing. These, you, I know you can't see these, but these are the ones for our trades folks that are actually in the field. And they're signing off that they can operate certain equipment, they can operate cutoff saws, they, they've seen certain types of repairs in the field and everything. So you have three different levels. Typically you have an apprentice level where you're being exposed. So you're not being necessarily assessed. So you, about first six months you go and you basically you go on all the crews. You spend a, a week or two on a water corrective crew or then you go on a water preventive crew, and then you go on to a sewer corrective, sewer preventive, then you might spend a, a week with meters and everything, and you're just there to observe. You're not being assessed anything, you just, all you need is to be awake and have a pulse, and <laughs> sit, and you go around with all these crews, and the idea is you're giving breadth of knowledge. You're trying to expose them to what's going on. So that's kind of the level one call card. Level two is now, okay, now you're assigned to a crew. Now you're on sewer preventive. So now here are all the skills you need for that. So now you're kind of that journeyman level and you're, you're starting to learn a, a, a skill, a, a, set, a skill set, right? And level three, now you're either, you may have an advanced qual card or you're, you're doing multiple qual cards. So now you're on, you got sewer preventive, but now you got water corrective or something like that, you know, so you can have either multiple cards or something like that. So different levels of uh, progression. All right, so now we kind of kind of defined what the, all those are. How do we get folks to get from the old system to the new system? So we kind of had to make these, we have, we've always had our, our um, enterprise resource system is SAP. Is anybody else on? SAP? Okay. I don't, it's just, this is what we had to work with. HR, um, we, we were in this system uh, a long time ago, so the re, we, I didn't choose SAP. I'm agnostic to ERPs. I'm just, it's just what we had to work with. So I'm going to talk a lot about SAP. It's just our system. So we had, I had to work within my system. So you, you know, you have to, just like you have to work within your system, whether be it SAP or not. So. But we have a, a training system. We keep all we hit, we keep really good training records in SAP. So every time if somebody's in training, if it's like this training, if if they didn't sign in, it didn't happen. So I have training records of, of everything, and it's all digitally recorded. There's a booking system. It's reconciled. If you didn't show up, you get kicked out of it, and all that stuff. So we have everybody has hard records. Of, of their training. So that's pretty important if you're doing competency-based promotion. Again, you have to, everybody has to agree on who's trained what if you're going to promote on it. Um, we're going to make, that's the gap analysis. Our skills assessment worksheet is the gap analysis we're going to do. What, what is the new system? What do your training records say you're qualified? 
and that's going to be the gap. So the things that you don't have, we're going to develop, and that's a, the worksheet gets you to understand what those gaps are, and then the individual development plan is your plan to succeed. So based on those gaps of what you're missing, that's going to be your individual plan to, to, to get to where you need to be. All right, so here's an example of our, um, we have a training history, and then we have our qualifications. So the difference is, you, you, I mean, you could go to one day of training, then the qualification may be you have to do, let's say it's a Microsoft Office course, and we have a Microsoft Office qual. You, you go to a PowerPoint class where that's good, well, that's only good for two years. You're going to have to do that again. So that's the qualification system. So the training is I did this course on this day. The qual, the qual means that's only good for two years. I need to repeat that training. So that's the difference between a training event and a qual. So we are tracking all of that. Each one of these, each one of these quals has a little egg timer with it. And I'll show you that in our new system. It's a stoplight, basically. It's red, yellow, and green lights that tells people what they're qualified and what they need to get. Again, if, it, if it's not in this system, it didn't happen. I, your dog ate it, whatever. I don't want, we don't want to hear it. It's got to be in, in our system. All right, so our skills assessment worksheet, this is, this is a, a one person at their level. Think of the, Go back to that progression path. Remember all those dots in that column? This is one person in a certain column with all those dots are right here. This is just transcribed right here. So these are all the things that they're supposed to have. This person's a, ma a warehouse manager, so they're, they're all the way on that right side of that column. They had a lot of things they had to do. That's what these are right here. So everybody, as you do this, and we do in each group, everybody has one of these. Again, leave no man or woman behind. Everybody's going to have a plan. So we need to ex assess where you're at. This is an example of what we do, this skills assessment process. We sit down, we, we do it with groups of people, and we sit down and we give them their training record and we give them this worksheet and we go through it one by one. Do you, this is a warehouse person, but do you have a forklift license? Yes, I see it right here, it's in my training record. That's an easy one. Yes, high school education, yes. HR said that when we hired you, so we're, we're, we're good on that. You got your driver's license. And we go through, did you do your onboarding? No, you have a certain leadership, you've done certain classes, you haven't done certain qual cards. So basically, we're going through their training record with them and determining where the gaps are. What are they missing? And those no's are going to be what we're going to make to make the plan. Yes? How are you dealing with some of those that expire? Like, you've got a two years with a yes, but this card is kind of ongoing. Then it's a no. If it, if, it, if it was a yes a year ago, it may be a no a year from now. Tracking that from other records to put on here. Okay. Yeah. So the, the system tracks not only the training itself, but it's tracking that timer as well. And I'll show you the electronic system. This paper system is a bridge to get to the electronic system. This is not, this is temporary, this is programmatic. This is just to get us to the new promised land. Our, the end result will be this paper stuff goes away, but we have to kind of bridge that gap. So, so the no's of, these are all the, if this, we're saying all that's required for this level of person we need to make a plan to get all the no's done and within a certain time frame. So we develop an individual development plan. We create SMART goals, uh, if everybody's heard of that, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. So we're gonna make goals that are, they, they make sense, right? They're achievable, we're gonna do this in a year, we're gonna do this in six months. So these are all the no's, they start going into this column. And here, I'm just throwing some dates out here, but complete your onboarding assignment. This one's based on availability because I don't have a 600 person bus and I only can do like 10 people at a time. We're not even gonna set, it's not realistic for me to set a time on this. So you're just gonna go on a waiting list and when I can get to you, I'll get to you on this. For this one, you got to do some purchasing training for the warehouse folks. You complete this now, if they have two years to do this to get it all done, we don't want to wait 23 months 
to get them done. We want to actually, we're going to make a goal to get them done early. So in this case, I'm going to set this, this deadline for a year from now. You should be able to do, the, our goal, it's not required for, in this, in this case, it's required in two years, but I'm going to set a goal for one year. And if something goes wrong, it's not going to count against you. You got a, another year. If you miss your goal, it's okay. But you know, at, at the end of two years, if it's required, if all this is required after two years, you're going to have a problem at the end of two years. All right, your qual cards. So um, we sit down by individual. We look at their records and we set goals for all of them. We make them very specific so they understand it, they're achievable, they can do it, and they're going to meet the time frame required. So for this to work, when we started this for a warehouse, the minimum time or the minimum time you have to do this for everybody is two years. So you don't have to get, you, nobody has to get done before two years. In some cases, it goes up to four years. If they have some external things that they need to do, um, they're, they're, you know, kind of uh, outside the organization. It's two to four years they have to get this stuff done. This is a lot. I told you it's a lot on my group to track all this. It's a lot on the admins. It's a lot on management. Kind of showing here the individual, all the individual has to worry about is getting their stuff done. The training team, we have to, we're do, I do progress reports to my, my managers, my bosses. So I have to show them where everybody's at, and I'm showing them by person of what they're doing in their progress. We're, we're following up with the manager, management of them, of the employees and the admins. The admins are maintaining the employee records. They're updating it. They're scheduling progress meetings. HR is working on the, the promas, the, the promotion process when, when it applies. And their managers have to do progress reports. So we're feeding them who's every month, at least at a minimum, we're showing them here's what your folks have done. We send them a report. Here's where they are, here's where they need to be. They're on track, they're off track. They're making progress, they're not making progress. And we feed that information to the managers and the managers are scheduling these interviews and doing progress reports to keep everybody on this, on this path, on this glide slope to getting done. So, yes? How many people are on your team? Uh, on this, I, I have two other people that really help me with this. I have a total of five people. Um, two are not kind of involved with this, but it's me and, and two others that are really doing this, so. All right, so here's our progress tracking. Um, so each one, you go in a date, and we did this, we did a progress meeting, and this person was on track or off track and recommendations. So we're making, you know, we're making changes to the plan if we need to, we're, we're keeping the individual involved. So. Part of, part of this and part of the, to getting HR to buy in all this is we needed to have good tracking of all this. We need to show that we are, we are tracking all our folks, we're keeping the progress. So let's say you had out of these 13, 13 people, these warehouse folks, only one of them at the end of the two years, one of them doesn't do it. It's like I'm not, I don't know why I had to do this, I don't, you know. Well, at the end of this, at the end of the two years, you were given the same opportunity as everybody else. You were explained the same thing. 12 out of the 13 successfully completed this. You're the one who didn't, and we have documentation of this whole process. So, I mean, you can make your case to say why, you know, you don't think this is right or whatever, but, you know, it, it's all in writing. So, so, you know, whatever that fallout is, uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, we'll just have to deal with it as it comes. But judging by the progress we've seen so far, everybody's on board, everybody's making progress, everybody's, we're only a couple months into the warehouse, but everybody's getting towards the goals. So hopefully we will either not have to deal with that or we'll minimize it. But the HR and the management team have committed to addressing that. They understand if this comes up, we will handle this, and we've done enough due diligence and tracking and everything to, 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 to do that. Yes, so question? So then every two years you have to start over? Do the tests no. change? Or? 
No, you just have to maintain. Some things you are, the qual cards you only do one time. Some things expire and you have to retake them, like the safety ones are constantly respiring. So that it's, eventually it goes into the electronic system and then it's just tracked and now it becomes a performance um, issue. So if you're, if you're, you'll see the red and green lights here. If you're red in a few areas, it, that, that becomes a discussion with you and your boss. Just like if your boss said now, what if you lost your wastewater license now? Or what if you lost uh, your driver's license? It would become a performance issue, right? So that's kind of the new, the new system. So, yes, so question. If you have veterans that's been there 15 years and they're going through the call cards and they're not meeting their expectations, what's the result? Is there like a <coughs> like discipline action or what? Well, what um, so. There's, there's, I know you, you, there's probably some resistance. So here, here's the thing. So there are, what I found out with this program is um, it's kind of, it shines a light on the organization. It's like turning on the light in the room and you see the <laughs> cockroaches start. There are, there are people that have gotten to certain positions for whatever reason that may not be qualified for that position, right? So this is going to, it, that, that problems exist. You could close, we can close our eyes and pretend that's not happening right now, but in organizations that, if you're honest with yourself, you'll recognize that that's probably happening in a lot of organizations right now. Can't say for sure for your organization, but so, for sure. so, <laughs> so this, this is going to shine the light on that situation, right? It didn't cause the situation, it didn't create it, but it's going to force a action on that eventually. If they can't do the qual card or they can't do a certification, eventually they are not going to be able to stay in that position. It may not affect them financially. It, they may not necessarily go down and pay, but they're not going to be able to, our, our, the way our pay bands work and everything, there's overlap and stuff like that. So you're not necessarily going to take money from them, but they're not going to be able to hold a position that they're not qualified for. But the, the entering argument is everybody has the opportunity, everybody's been doing the same thing, and it's fair as far as every, everybody's getting the same rules applied, and they're going to have the same opportunity, and they're going to have an individual plan for them. But it, it, this is kind of ends up forcing you to deal with the issues that already exist in your organization. So if that, what we said is at the beginning of this is we're not going to predict winners and losers out of this. We're not going to say who, it maybe, you know, we're not going to say, we're not going to predetermine that. We're going to give everybody a same fair system, the same set of rules, the same opportunity, and then we will deal with the outcome on the back end. Maybe those people that we think at the front end, maybe they'll do just fine. Right, so why 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 to try to predict it on the on the front end? So, but your 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 point is valid, right? So, but if we don't do this, how are we going to get better? Right, right. Right. There's no other there's no other way to get to that new right. new area. So, sir, do you have a question? Oh yeah, just going back to her question there. So you, I think you mentioned uh, uh, earlier that you used LMS to assign uh, some of the training. Yes. To keep track electronically. You know, mm -hmm. Yep. So, so this is um, uh, the uh, paper side of it? This is the paper to get us to the new land, but I'm actually going to show you the LMS here okay. in a second. You're going to see that whole, yes? Uh, when you mentioned a minute ago about qual cards and doing them once, and then, uh, earlier you mentioned the different plants in, in your county, uh, if you have an operator that maybe did the qual card for a certain plant, and the pro they worked at that plant for maybe three, four years, or however long. Then they go and have to, you have to move them to a new plant. How do you deal with the refresher? Or do you evaluate this operator? How do you? Well, so, so you know, we've we've talked a lot about that. So there's no like certain things may be similar enough that you can give them credit for. Like maybe the right. the influence of most plants are in yes. pre preliminaries pretty similar, right? We don't need to necessarily talk about that, but there may be differences and stuff. So you could maybe, they could get signed off for being qualified, but if you didn't have ozone, 
or if you didn't have a major system or you did UV in one and ozone in another, you're going to have, so the plant, it's going to be up to the plant manager to determine what that gap is and make them do the necessary um, steps in that. So we actually haven't had that situation come up, but we're expecting it to. Yes, question. Do you use that as an employee evaluation? Well, no. Most people, but most companies that, evaluate. that was a great lead into my next slide. <laughs> is uh, thank you for that. I'll pay you later. Um, performance appraisal. So we actually want to. Th we we think we need to put some of this goal planning and this performance into our performance uh, assessments. So there are, there are some of these non graded sections. We want this to show up in their performance appraisals. So what, what they've done, we have certain sections, I won't go into our performance appraisals, but we want accomplishments over here and we want those ESD goals to show up over here. So part of this is training our managers to do better goal setting and better tracking of accomplishments in that. So again, we're raising the bar. So this is, it's separate from our performance appraisals, but it does go into their overall record. It gets scanned into SAP. But we want that same thing to be kind of mimicked on their performance appraisals. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just saying like uh, the evaluations that I've seen, they have a different matrix than what, what you have. What you have is like progressive, okay? You're here. If you go through all these things, you have a chance to go higher. Yes. But on the evaluation, they kind of say, you know, you could do better on this uh, part of your job. You know, well, learn some, some skills that will help you. But well, th there is a performance aspect of it, too. So the way I look at it is the qual card doesn't make sure you show up to work on time every day and make sure you, you're treating people with you know, dignity and respect and you're being a good employee as well. So th that's the other, to me, that's the other side of it as well. You still also have to be a good employee, right? And, and, and stuff like that. I'm not sure how to, how to capture those into one system. So it, it's kind of separate where we're gaining the skills and competencies in one, but your actual performance in that and how you um, behave and act and, and things like that may be for us, we address it through our performance appraisal. So it, for us, it's a separate system. So, okay. All right, so this is actually what the employees log into. This is, this is custom made in our, we had a developer make this for us, but this is, again, that progression path, that's what this is right here. We have different sections in it, but when you log into our system, you see what you need to have for your level. There's a alerts area up here, tells you when things are coming due. There's kind of a summary area, and I'm gonna go through these one by one. There's what you need at your current level, and on the right side, there's a what if tool. What if I wanna be the manager one day? What if I wanna change jobs and go to something else? You can apply that template over what you have, and you can kind of do your own little analysis to see what you need. So you, eventually, you'll be able to go through, see anybody in the organization and how you stack up qualification-wise. A uh, little system here we have, there's a green light, means I'm good, I'm current. If it goes yellow, it means I'm good for now. 60 days it expires, and if it's red, you don't have it or you're overdue, so that's a problem. And then there are some ones where you may be getting things for the next level, but it's not required for you yet. So you don't have a stoplight, but you have this little blue eye information. I, have, I don't have everything for the next level, but I'm starting to stack up those blue eyes getting ready for the next level. There's alerts and notifications. So these just pop up when things start turning yellow or they go red, you get them up in the alert section. <coughs> this, was, this was actually one I got earlier this year. I had my code of ethics was coming due. I had to go do an online course and it, it went yellow and I did the online course and now it's green. So this is kind of the promised land. When, when, this is where we want to be. We want this, we're gonna to go to this electronic tracking system and the paperwork's gonna kind of go away. Um, you, here you can print your qualification report. There's a little print button. If, you, if you're a person who likes paper, you can see it all in print form. 
all the dates, all your records and histories and everything. We have an employee review portion, so you can do uh, every year coming up on your anniversary, you have to certify that you've looked at your record and that it's good. So you have a little electronic signature in here. At least we know once a year <laughs> you're going in there and, and checking your stuff right before your uh, performance appraisal for us. You can also, there's a little ticket help desk thing here kind of, so you could say, hey, I have a problem with my record, and that goes right to me and my training team, and we can fix it. Something is red, it's supposed to be green, and we can get that, so you can send that right to us. We have these little roll-up bars, these status bars, so everything's in it. We have these categories, licenses, licenses, certifications, and safety. If you come up and everything's green, you don't even have to go down below. You don't have to look at everything. Everything's 100% green, you're good to go. So you're, you're where you need to be. If something is in the red and it's less than 100%, there's something down there that's you're overdue on. And you need to make that, you need to take some action there. The system is sending out email reminders 60 days prior to. It's telling you some things are coming due. My goal for my training team, I'm actually looking out further ahead, and I'm trying to make sure people don't go yellow and don't go red, and I'm trying to get people in, in these classes and everything. But this system is, is tracking it all. So this would be great if you came in and you were, this is, happens to be a warehouse manager, and you saw all these greens here, you're good to go. You got all your stuff, everything's good to go, you, you're meeting the requirements of your level. <coughs> Um, what happens here if something goes red, it, uh, what I say, it kind of floats to the top. The red ones come to the top and you can kind of see them right away. This, this thing, actually there's little flyaway panels here. There's actually 16 safety ones underneath this group. You're only seeing the top three and you're seeing the most relevant ones to you. If one goes red, it pops to the top. You see it, it takes a priority. Everything's good. I don't really even have to look down in this, yes. How many hours would you say uh, an operator would need to set aside every month to, to go over training? <coughs> yeah, so this, that's a great question. So this is definitely an increase for us. So um, we, we, before, we like to say formal training, it was 40 hours per, per, um, per employee per year. That was kind of a metric, right? And we said... It was kind of, and I never liked it because in actuality, it doesn't work that way. Your, your younger, junior, less experienced should be doing more training than your more experienced. So if you actually look at the numbers, it's higher for your, your junior people than it is for your senior people, right? What I will say is this will be an increase for everybody across the board. So we're doing more training for more people, so it's probably... I'm expecting to be 40 and 8, between 40 and 80 hours. We may double, double that, but again, that, it depends on what level you're at, how technical your position is. Um, the more technical, you tend to do more training. Any changes between different positions too, I would, I would imagine? Like yes. For a, for a warehouse worker, it would be less than... It's, it's less than a, a trades person. Our, our construction crews, our trades associates tend to be very high. Junior construction folks, tend to have more training than a, a, like a warehouse manager. But what we're doing here is we're trying to make, put that warehouse manager in more leadership and supervisory um, management type courses as well. So what this will, this will, this makes everybody train more. I will say that, but yes. So how do you evaluate between a junior who goes through all those classes and the guy that has a lot more experience So how do you? So so okay. Look, you, you got a guy who has twenty years of experience. You got a new guy who's got out of college. He zips through all those green, green, green. Takes all the classes you ask him to. So he should be able to just run the whole uh, company. Aside well, from the guy who's been there so, twenty years. No. Well, so this takes you up through the. It gets you up to the subject matter expert level. Right, so it doesn't, this doesn't get you into supervisor and manager positions. So you're, gonna, you're still gonna have to interview for that. So it may seem like this, is, this will happen quickly, but these are, this happens over 
uh, years. So these qual cards, it's not, you're not going to do this qual card in, in two weeks. It's going to take you a year to two years to do each one of these things. You also have, for the, for the operators, you have the licensing requirements too. So you can't go up until you meet state level requirements as well. So you, you can get to a certain level and it's over years. It's not, it, you know, and, and all of these, there's also minimum requirements from our job descriptions that you have to stay at a level as well. So you have to meet those time requirements as well. So if it says, if it says you're, you're level two, you have to have, um, let's say two years experience. You still have to, you still have, even though you have everything done, you have to meet that two years experience as well. Does that, that answer your question? Um, not really. Okay. No, I'm just saying you have two people, 20 year veteran, kid just got out of high, uh, college. They, this guy really helped out a big picture of how everything runs. This guy, he, he can study, he can pass the test, but he doesn't have that experience. So how do you evaluate the two? I they both want the same position. Well, I mean, I, I think you're going to have that to some degree as well. Like, if you look at a police officer, you may have a young sergeant and a, a veteran sergeant that are getting the same pay grade. One has more experience than the other. But the point of this is they, they both meet a minimum requirement, right? right? But if you, the thing is, you don't have to go to a four at this level, you could stay at a two. And you could stay there for 20 years if you wanted. You're going to be very qualified too, and you're going to know you're going to be the best two that we have. But you're still going to be a two, right? So. so it's, it's a hospital. You don't really know who the, who's the best qualified. Well, I, this doesn't really discern who's best or not. This just sets a minimum. It sets a minimum baseline of you've met the minimum requirements for this. So, yes. Are you saying to, uh, from what I'm getting from you, John, are you saying that uh, this portion is for the one to four, and then what you're thinking is as soon as you go to interview, because these are, this takes care of the PROMA positions, right? And then once yeah. you pass, get to that fourth part, and you want to go into management and want to run the plant, then you post you're going to have to interview. interview process. What, after you get out of the kind of subject matter expert levels, and you get into the running things and management, per, uh, hiring, firing, and those decisions, those, those are all interview process. So we have, it, the, the, you can't become the director of the organization through this process. You're, you're only going to get, you're getting to the kind of know the competencies of your field, but after that, there, there is still an interview process. So, so that, th that hasn't really changed. And this really doesn't discriminate between who's better and who's not. So. I'm kind of running out of time here, so I'm gonna. I'm not gonna go through all of these here. But uh, I just I wanted to show you. You can click on any of these other levels, and you can apply your your credentials to another level. So that's what that is. That's the what if tool on the right hand side. So takeaways here. Um, long term effort. Um, where we started is not where we finished on this. It's a bottom-up approach that takes top-down commitment. So if you're going to do something like this, the top has to support it. You're trying to grow the organization skills from the bottom up through competency, but the top, you're, you're not going to be able to do this by yourself without top-level support is what I'm saying. 